So there are a couple different user types in Apex, and these are just good for out of the box type stuff. And what we're going to do is just talk about a couple of these different user types. The user with the most privileges or can have the highest impact on a instance is the instance administrator. And this is typically going to be your DBA or the person that is responsible for uh, installing uh, your Apex instance. Only one or two people really need to, to have this role. Right, um, you can you can really hurt or impact the instance here uh, by changing instance level settings, potentially maybe hindering emails being generated from the system, or maybe accidentally changing some defaults that have some repercussions you weren't expecting. Okay, so yeah, instance administrators typically your DBA, and it's actually the person that is responsible for setting up workspaces. I'm going to go ahead and log in as the admin. Notice that I'm logging into the internal workspace. Uh, this is a special workspace for Apex that looks completely different than any other workspace. It's the uh, internal instance administrator workspace. So if you haven't seen this before, here's what it looks like. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to come over here to manage workspaces. And as the instance, instance administrator, I can manage and modify all workspaces uh, in this particular instance. And we're actually going to go ahead and create multiple workspaces. And here it's going to ask me a couple uh, pieces of information here. And I'm going to go ahead and statically prefix workspace name. So in other words, I'm going to provide a common name that all of your workspaces are going to share and we're just going to call it um, uh, interim apex and we're going to make uh, three workspaces we're going to install the sample database application uh, we're going to install the sample web sheet uh, for this particular one because we are going to talk about web sheets towards the end of this class I want to make sure that you have enough space to do work next so here you can see that I'm going to be creating three workspaces, all of which have a, a user that is the same exact name as the workspace. Say next. And I'm going to go ahead and make a password for all of these workspaces. It's a workspace administrator. This is uh, usually going to be a team lead of a group of developers. And you should limit access to this. Really, not everyone needs to be a workspace administrator. Again, just one or two people on a team. And really, their only responsibility is going to be creating new application developer accounts. And then the last two users are, are fairly straightforward. Uh, we have application developer. Well, this is what all your developers, this is the role that all of your developers are going to have. This is basically what you need to create applications or work in, in SQL Workshop. And then the last option that we have is application user. And that is basically the person who authenticates to your applications. And so here, I want to be clear, we are talking about built-in application users or, or, or application users using the built-in user management tools of Apex. And we say here it's good for a small group, generally less than 20. I want, I want to be very clear that we're not saying that Apex as a whole only works for a small group of users less than 20. We just mean the user management tools internal to Apex as far as trying to manage usernames and passwords and accounts is only manageable for users or less than 20 end users. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is usually you're going to have some sort of single source of truth as far as user passwords and usernames are concerned. Like you have uh, Active Directory or LDAP or single sign-on. Maybe if you're coming from a forms background, um, you'll, you have database user accounts, right? So those are just uh, different ways of just managing your end users outside of the built-in Apex stuff. So of course, that should also kind of hint to you that there are many different ways that you can authenticate a user. Right, so you don't have to use the built-in Apex stuff. And in fact, in the advanced class, we build a completely custom table-driven authentication, and we talk about how you could potentially use LDAP or some other component. 
Please make sure to create separate accounts for developers. That seems pretty self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised how many times I've kind of hopped into an instance where everyone just kind of shared the same account. Um, that You completely destroy credibility and accountability by doing that, so please make sure each developer gets their own account. And the last thing here is please, please, please um, keep developers in development. You do not need to be constantly modifying tests and production. The idea there being that if your developers don't have access to test and production, then what that means is that the QA process for deployment needs to be hardened. In other words, uh, you need, maybe needs to be a little bit more testing before things get pushed to test, a little bit more testing before things get pushed to production. Now I know that's the perfect world, and you know we all don't we don't all don't live in a perfect world, but at least you know that is the that is what we should be working very hard for.